he would do a whole lot better. We got Brandon Ralph here. Salt Lake City High, you guys feel it? Ah, tremendous. I think it's safe to say they're feeling good for you. I guess so. How are you enjoying Salt Lake, man? How are you enjoying the con right now? Uh, it's great. Everyone is, oh, we've got a lot of echo here. A lot of echo, uh, echo, Everyone's echo. Uh, <laughs> a, a very kind and happy, which is good. You heard me happy go twice. Happy, happy, happy. happy, happy. My name is Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Um, <laughs> I really like We're going to do this whole thing on Echoes, just so you all know, so you don't, you're not going crazy when you hear double, 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 double. I, I uh, enjoy my time in Salt Lake City uh, and, and Utah. I realized I was talking to uh, one of the um, uh, gentlemen who started this convention and realized What's that? Dan, I talking to Dan, and realizing how, how often I've kind of actually been in Utah, uh, being from Iowa, driving out, I don't know, five or six times over the course of my almost 20 years in Hollywood. Uh, Man, I'm from Chicago, Illinois originally, so being here for the first time ever, this has been amazing for me. You all are a wonderful crowd. Give yourselves a round of applause. The fry sauce that they have out here. No, oh, what's special about this? So it is so. You know, you know, Chris, Chris, Chris I'm, I'm doing some, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think I got something you like, though. I think I got something you like. You got some? Yeah, check this out. What are we checking out? Salt Lake, to be honest, I, when, we went straight from the airport to here, so, oh, wow. but, you know, tonight I'll get to explore it, but the con has been fantastic. I was telling Brandon, you have to try this thing they have called fry sauce. Fry sauce? It's some sauce they made for french fries. It is of the angel sweat. <laughs> and of the love of Jesus, okay? So, you dip it in the fries and you partake of it and it is holy. I swear to you are all sweaty the, Jesus. Sweaty Jesus. Alright, we'll talk about it later, Lord. I sweaty understand Jesus <laughs> you for your I understand you are on a very low man. carb diet, Brandon. You can go ahead and cheat once while you're here, alright? I'll try it. You'll try it? Yeah. yeah. Let me get the one important question out the way that everybody wants to hear. Season 4 of Legends of Tomorrow premieres on October 23rd, I believe. 22nd. 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 How do you guys feel back? I feel coming back for a fourth season. It's so weird. I can't believe we're already on the fourth season. I know. After the first season, I wasn't sure we were going to make it. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it was a fine season, but... We had, it was very challenging to get a show up, uh, up and running and all the technical aspects of it. Season four, I can honestly tell you, is probably my favorite. It, it really, like, you know how we started getting kind of crazy? And kind of. What do you yeah. mean? Kind of. That's the one thing I love about the show. It has no rules. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> we, uh, we just doubled down this season, so... Wow. We doubled down last year, and then we're like tripling, quadrupling down. Yeah, it's exponential growth, really, so... 
you all just gave everybody math equations to figure out how amazing this is going to be. What can we expect expect from the White Canary this season? Ooh, what can you expect? Ooh. Let's let me give you a better one. How does Sarah Lance handle finding out her father is passed? Oh, spoiler alert! If you ain't seen it. <laughs> the end of Aaron Rowe. I mean, you might want to get it together. You know, uh, I think Legends kind of has been priding itself on keeping things light and fun, mm -hmm. and uh, Dad's death isn't really fit into that category. So we we kind of that happens before the season starts. Um, but one thing that we get to do see a lot is Sarah Lance really falling in love. So we're gonna get that full on Sarah Lance Ava Sharp relationship is what you're telling us. Yeah, I think we see Sarah, she's always so in control and in charge and know what she's doing. And now all of a sudden she's in this new territory of a relationship and girl is a hot mess and does not know what she's doing. I think that's what I love about the character of Sarah Lance. She is a strong, powerful woman who doesn't back down from anybody on that ship. The fact that Sarah Lance can put Mick Rory in check at a moment's notice is hilarious to me. A dude who just wants to sit around and drink beers like, I don't really want to be on this team. I'm here. It's a very great Mick Rory impression, right? I, I wish I could give you so many spoilers right now. <laughs> but. Brandon, how do you feel going for this Ray Palmer, growing as the Adam, actually growing and getting bigger? The character has developed in such a way that nobody would have expected being a lower tier character in DC Comics. You've taken this and brought it to an entirely new level. How did you go about that? Uh, well, thanks. Um, you know, I started uh, this character as Ray Palmer. Uh, and. Uh, yeah. And uh, the appeal when I was brought on to Arrow was that Ray was there to be the levity, the, 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 the funny, uh, add some light to what can be a kind of a darker show on Arrow. And that was what was exciting to me. The superhero thing I was a little bit wary about because I thought I've already played Superman like the best superhero ever. How can, how can I compete with that? Um, but, I, but they sold me on doing the comedy because that's my first love. So. Uh, I did that, and um, you know, Ray was created, and through creating Ray, then we got to see uh, the Adam. Right. And so Ray was fully established before the superhero aspect even came out of it. So he was locked in there, which is pretty cool. And Ray informed the Adam more than the Adam informed Ray at the beginning. Now it's kind of changing because Ray, as a superhero, uh, excuse me, the Adam is affecting, is allowing Ray to learn some things about what it is to be a superhero. To, what kind of effect can you actually have on the world and other people? And that's the world that I like to play in now uh, from a dramatic perspective is as the relationship goes on with Nora, uh, is, is how much influence can someone have on another, positive or negative? I remember the episode where Ray didn't have the suit and he had to learn how to be the hero without the suit. How did that feel? Because you had become so comfortable with being the Adam now. Now you had to go back to being Ray Palmer, being a hero. Yeah, it's a different thing for, for, for Ray. And I, you know, he hadn't totally given up being, being Ray Palmer, but he's not asked and tasked to do the same thing as on the Wave Rider as he did as the CEO of a big company. Uh, you know, he does do a little bit of, of inventing and, and science, but it's mostly through, as the Adam that he's contributing to the team. You take that away. You know, his ego is like, well, well, what does that make me? Who am I? And I think the real value of Ray to the team, even without uh, uh, the Adam, is, is, is the heart that he brings to them and, and connecting everyone and hopefully connecting our, our, our different characters and giving them room to, you know, like make worry and finding common ground uh, where they can be friends. I want to ask the captain this question. Because you've been such a strong captain, the crew is rotated, and now this year you get the regularness and the weirdness that is John Constantine. How does Sarah Lance deal with that? Granted, they've had the little thing. Yeah, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Um, well, I mean, they, they've actually known each other for a while. Constantine was the one who brought Sarah's soul back. Right. So I, I think they had a, a relationship for a while, and he, he's a unique addition to the team. He comes and he's very much like, he thinks he's, you know, God's gift to Earth. 
uh, which he gets checked pretty quick. Um, we actually, he just did a scene, I don't know if I can say what it was, but but he's naked in the scene. Well, I think that was enough of the audience right here. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty great. His, his dynamic is the perfect addition to the Legends, and I think you guys will be really excited about the stuff that we're doing with him this season. It was a lot of fun, Ray. Uh, team stuff we've had a lot of fun together Matt's awesome he's a great addition not only to the show but just as to our cast and, uh, fits right in and it's been awesome having him I have to ask this question because we're in this new empowering age and Sarah Lance being the character that you portray and you bring forth being such a strong woman a member of the LGBTQIA community how important is that and how important is that you're able to do it and resonate with so many people who feel like they still have to be in the shadows to an extent it's my favorite part of Sarah Lance. I mean, her her kind of her sexuality and the fact that it is it just is what it is. It's it's really not a big deal. It's not like it has to be the only factor about it. It really just shows that it you're a person you are who you are. That's just who you love. Like that's it. That's the best way to be. You are who you are, you love who you love. One of the things I heard that you love, Katie, I'm not going to even go dress Sarah, is you love to dance. You've been a backup dancer, and I heard you are a kick-ass break dancer. You know, I've been known to cut up the floor, cut up the rug, here and there. Hmm. I should have asked the audio people to have a track to see if you could really still do some moves. What would y'all think about that? Do you have a nice hip hop track? She could break a few dance, a few break dancing moves. Don't throw your hands up. Just find something quickly. I want to see what Katie Lotz has. Salt Lake wants to see what Katie Lotz has. Am I right? Maybe if you give a lot more love and a lot more energy, we'll be in how to get into this because right now I think she's feeling it. I need that side to give me some energy over there. The fact that I'm stalling for them stalling, it makes no sense. But also, I didn't hear a beat. I didn't either, which is really disappointing. Was that a beat? No, that wasn't a beat. That was a beat. Oh. We're also going to find out about Brandon's rapping career. <laughs> if I get the Adam to drop 16 balls, my life is. Change. Uh oh. I think we got something. bunch of martial artists there and they would teach me to fight and I would teach them to dance and so it's a good trade-off I would just learn whatever anybody would teach me Brandy you are a die-hard workout enthusiast I have done some research on you man you don't want to have a cheat day for nothing you see I told you about fries you looked at me like I said everything wrong in the book how do you maintain 
maintain your workout regimen, your diet with such a vigorous schedule that you guys have built? Well, let me let you in on a little secret here. Um, the key to working out is eating. Right. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm playing with that pause and people was like, for real, you gotta eat all oh, along. Because the truth is, I don't really work out these days. I, since we started the season, we've been shooting for three months, I've worked out once. Um, now I do lift my son up and throw, I have a six-year-old son, so I do have some oh, uh, real-life exercise that happens and a lot of walking, but um, obviously I did some weightlifting in my past for various roles you may have seen. And a certain man of steel, so, potentially. So, so that work and muscle memory have locked some things in, but I really, honestly, I, I don't work out, I don't have time, I haven't had time yet. And so it's, it's diet, it's Bulletproof Coffee, um, which is a start. I do a, ke it's basically a keto keto diet, yeah. ketogenic diet. I'll be brief here, but what a ketogenic diet is basically is uh, high quality, high fat, so fat is good for you, everyone, as long as it's high quality fat, and you can look on the internet and find out what that is. Uh, moderate protein and low carb, and definitely low sugar. And if I do that, um, I don't have to work out very much. And I'm and I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I have better brain power, better energy. Um, I can um, be kinder to people because I'm not hangry. And um, <laughs> that's great. That is a real thing, being hangry. You said you have a six-year-old son, I have two children. I have a 14-year-old, a four-year-old. How does it feel for your son having a superhero as a dad? Oh, uh, I mean, I think it's the best. Uh, I, judging by his response, he tells everybody. Um, I don't have an anonymity when I go out with, with, with Leo. He's the Flash, also, if you didn't know. He's the, he's the real Flash. Uh, and mom is Wonder Woman. Obviously, she plays Nora Dark in Legend of Tomorrow. But, yes. um, but in, in, in our version, he, he knows that. But he, when we go out with the Justice League, and she's Wonder Woman in the, in the scenario. So uh, you know, he loves it. And he thinks I really. He, he, I keep trying to like break it in easy and totally. Well, it's not. You know, I do. I play it on TV, buddy. But he still thinks he asked me to do. Um, Heat vision every once in a while. <laughs> well, look, I know we got a long line of fans who want to talk to you guys. So, both the fans start coming up one by one. If you've got a question, please try to keep your question moderately simple. And if you're in the line or not, let's have fun with it. Hi, my question is for Caitlin. Where are you? She's right here in the middle. Oh. All oh, right, right. They're right in the middle. They're right here dancing. Hi, I love you. I love you. Anyway, my question for you is, on the arrow, you know, you play your character, and um, before um, Alnar found out, you know, with your martial arts and everything, you know, how do you keep your character well and also keep that secret? How do I keep my character what? You know, like you, um, with your role, like how do you go back to, after you've been gone for a long time, you know, and when you're drowning in the water, and then how do you change back from your character to real life? How do you balance between being basically Sarah Lance and Katie Lotz? Yes, uh, that's my question. Hmm. I mean, characters sometimes do leak into your real life. Uh, I definitely will find myself out somewhere way too confident of my martial arts skills or badassness than I really am. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, I think. You just, you're, you know you as a person. I've spent way more time with me as Katie Lotz than with Sarah Lance, so it's, it's kind of easy to fall back to. I would say you're more like, uh... Uh, Katie Lotz than you are Sarah Lance in person. Yeah, <laughs> so, I get that. That just confused people real quick. Uh, sorry, it's a bad joke. <laughs> Very good. I got it up. All right, thank you for your question. What's your name? Hi, uh, my name is Kat. How are you? And my question is for Katie. First of all, I absolutely love Sarah Lance. Um, so I always loved the relationship between Sarah and Nissa, and I know that Sarah is with Ava now, which is great. But given that Nissa kind of represents her time with the League of Assassins, I was wondering if she could or would ever want to go back to that relationship. 
I, I think it would be very interesting to introduce that relationship back to see what happens. Um, I know Katrina Law is busy doing other things. A bunch of other stuff at one yeah. time. <laughs> She's always on all these other shows, but I, I think it would be fantastic if we could bring her back. But I feel like she would be happy for Sarah. I think Nissa would be happy for Sarah. Um, and who knows what Nissa's doing? I mean, she already got married. Like, who knows what she's up to? Well, now that marriage has gotten annulled, she set Oliver free. Yeah. Thank you for your question. What's your name? Hi, I'm Will. Uh, uh, I have a question for both of you. Um, so the crossovers every year keep getting bigger and bigger, and so do the threads. So I'm wondering, can you tell us or give us any hints towards what the villain or threat might be in this year's crossover? Um, I, unfortunately I cannot. I do not know anything really about the crossover. The legends are um, not a part of it, so um, I don't know what the script is. Or I know it involving a new character in the Arrowverse, which everyone's very excited about. The character being Bad Woman. That's right. Which is a great addition. Is it Bad Woman or Bad Girl? It's Bad Woman. Because oh. it's, it's a Bad Girl, a Bad Woman, a Bad Man. It's a whole lot of flying creatures. And, uh... I know, right? It's hard to keep track. But everybody have been wanting for Bad Woman's character to maybe meet up with Sarah Lance. But I had heard that you guys, unfortunately, will not be a part of the crossover this season. How is that going to be? How's it going to affect the Legends as a whole? Because we always see them have this big interaction with all the other shows. We'll just go on, you know, kicking butt over in our part of the world or part of time. While they're, while they're busy doing whatever they're doing, we're, we're helping everyone else. I mean, our, our show really is quite different from the other shows. So it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit as well or as easily. And just logistically, crossovers are very difficult uh, to do. And so when you already have so many characters from Arrow and Flash, and then we're like, hey, we got our whole cast of eight. <laughs> it's very hard to work everyone in and still have great storylines. So I think they're really gonna try to focus on uh, building out specific storylines rather than just staying surface with tons. Our show is like watching a crossover every week. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Hot girl, what do you have for us? Hi. Hi, Katie. Um, Thank you for what you and the other DC ladies are doing with she Would you Would you talk about uh, she Authority, why you started it, and what you hope to accomplish with that? Yeah. Already accomplishing. So, us ladies, we're, now actually it's getting better. There's a lot more women on these shows, but a lot of the times we're, we're finding ourselves in scenes and we're the only woman, or there's maybe two, and also the crew is very heavily male. Uh, it's just the way the industry has been. And during the crossovers when we all got together and all of a sudden we were like, wow, there's six girls, like in this number of us. And it, and it felt really nice to be able to have someone to talk to. And I think women face sometimes different issues than men in the industry and also in life. And to be able to have that support and we wanted to figure out a way to kind of cement that and, and spread it out and share that with the rest of the, you know, the rest of the world. And so we created She Authority as a way for people to be able to share their stories and their experiences and really harbor just a feeling of women supporting each other, learning from each other, and lifting each other up, rather than having to compete against each other. And now we have our website, and which has been awesome, and we're hoping to start to do some video content and some live events. That's kind of what we have to look forward to. Is the website available for people to go visit right now? Yeah, sheathority.com. Sheathority.com, guys. Make sure you check that out. Thank you for your question. And if anybody ever wants to write an article, it's anyone can submit an article. Whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, we, we want to tell everyone's story, so write an article, send it in. Great. Kid Flash, what you got? Hello, my name is Dante, and like, I, just, I love both of you guys and all the CW Arrowverse shows. They're my be favorite part of half the year, pretty much. But my question's for both of you guys, like out of 
all the actors you've worked with that have portrayed a speedster, who's your favorite to work with and why? Ooh, that make you choose. I mean, how many have you worked with? I've worked with Grant, Tom, uh, Keenan. Uh, I didn't work. No. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, at Eobard? Four. Yeah, Anybody else? Did I miss anything? <laughs> I'm not thinking of two rooms in no way. Violet? I didn't work. Uh, no, I didn't work. No. 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 This is getting confusing. Anybody else got count? So, uh, uh, the answer, uh, answer is Grant. Uh, Grant's the best. He started it all. And uh, we never get, you know, I did one episode of Flash, uh, which was a real highlight for me and great for the Atom. And then in the crossovers, like I had barely any scenes with him and we never, there's never enough screen time to work with him. He's funny and hilarious and talented and uh, I, I, this says nothing less about the other uh, actors, but uh, I want to work more with him. So. I'm gonna say Keenan, cause he's my little ray of sunshine. I love yeah. that boy so much. So that gives you an answer? You, get, you, you feel happy now because you have on the Wally West suits. You feel like you feel justified. And she said, Kate loves him. Thank you for your question. What's your name? Hi. Hi, I'm Kelson. Uh, my question is for Brandon. Uh, could you compare and contrast what your favorite things about being Superman and the Atom? And my mom must know who's taller, me or you? Oh. Well, how tall are you? 6'6. Six, six. Oh, you're taller. <laughs> So last night in Vancouver, we were going to dinner, and my son and I were walking down the street, and this gentleman walked past me who was taller than I am, <laughs> than I am. And, and Leo said, oh, there's somebody taller than you, Dad! We thought that was really interesting, anyway. So, he would be very impressed by you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, the difference between uh, Superman and the Atom, there are, there are, very, uh, there are many, um, but I think what I've kind of done over the course of playing Ray Palmer is blend a little bit of Clark Kent into Ray Palmer because, uh, thank you, because he's, he's my favorite character ever to play with uh, uh, Clark Kent. And um, thank you. And I, and, I, and I think there are a lot of similarities to bring over between um, Superman and, and, and the Atom and representing that light and that energy of Superman, uh, uh, which, you know, is, is a little bit missing these days. And, um, I'm happy to represent that and bring that. And I think Ray is less clumsy than, uh, than Clark. That aspect, but his enjoyment for life and his passion for science uh, is, is the same as, as, as Clark's uh, enjoyment of being human and, and interacting with uh, people. Because as Superman, he can't do that. Uh, but as Clark, he gets to hide and he gets to. I always played his exuberance, uh, his, his clumsiness came out of his exuberance about life and enjoying and, and meeting people. Um, and so Ray's excitement comes from, you know, discovering new things and, and you know, and meeting people as well in this way. So they're, they're alike in that way. Thank you for coming. I think Mom has a question now. Yeah, Mom does. <laughs> um, welcome, Captain. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here, too. <laughs> she said it as a matter of fact. I knew to. <laughs> Actually, my question is, um, and I heard this at another panel, so I apologize to anybody I might be taking this from, but what is your spirit animal and why? And this is for both of you. Uh, well, thank you for the question. I just want to, I, I think that that is a, a term, just to, have to say as a disclaimer, that um, is not necessarily appropriate um, uh, for a Native American community. Um, so just, I, I did, made, the, made the same mistake on Twitter a few years ago, and I was rightfully um, corrected, so just make public service announcement. Um, but in that vein of, of what do I, what do I, what do I um, feel, uh, an animal, animal that speaks to me, um, I either go, usually go with some kind of aviary, avian species, a bird of some sort, uh, either a hawk or, or, or an eagle, uh, as I'll try to feel like I'm seeing, trying to see the bigger picture. Personal life and in life. I thought it was a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Turtles are. Brandon did it all majestic. I see a hawk or an eagle. Something that soars in the sky. It's getting right into a turtle. And I can give you an every Turtles are good because they take life nice and easy. Nothing bothers. I'm just mad at you. 
Um, I've had a shaman tell me that mine is a falcon, but I don't know. If I were to choose a tiger. Fierce. Thank you for your question. What's your name? We got a time for about a couple more. What's your name, sir? My name is Don. How are you doing? The legends of tomorrow are portrayed kind of as miserable screw-ups in the TV show, at least. And do you feel that that's accurately portrayed, since you, they're taking the smaller characters or not? Did you say miserable? He said miserable screw-ups. Like, tell us how you really feel watching the show. I go with the second half. I go with screw-ups for sure. I mean, I think we have a lot of fun. I don't think we're miserable at all. We screw up, but yeah. we have just because we're having fun. You make things miserable for other people. <laughs> Sometimes. You want to have to get on the phone. But I understand, yeah, totally what your question is. Yes, we are we are lovable, lovable screw-ups, is like we would like to say. Um, and that's where the fun comes in. That's where, you know, we, 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 we don't take ourselves too seriously. And it sets us apart and, and makes for the enjoyment and the magic that is the legend of tomorrow. I think we see enough of the superhero that has everything under control, and is always in charge, and knows exactly what to do. Like, it's fun to have somebody who's a little more human, and I think that's what, what we, we try to bring. Thank you for your question. What's your name? Uh, Juan. How's it going? Uh, I wanted to ask, like, John, John Constantine. Constantine. John Constantine. <laughs> He's in it, so there's going to be some supernatural, some demonic things. And I was wondering, will there be an episode dedicated to uh, the other muertos, the day of the dead? Oh my god, I would love that. Could you repeat the last one? The day of the dead. Oh, oh. The day of the dead. Yeah. It's like one of the best holidays ever. Uh, it's super fun. You've never celebrated that whole... I'm going to pitch that to our writers as soon as I get off stage. <laughs> You've made, you've made an episode. <laughs> and, and there is, there, there are, uh, there's a ton of supernatural. I mean, the whole season four is about supernatural creatures, essentially, as magical creatures. And this so you get your fill of it. We screw things up for the more magical. That's right. Is there more Bebo? Do we get more Bebo in season four? Uh, Bebo's going to make a, a presence of some sort. He's, he's even in just little pieces, he's little Easter eggs he's in the season. Uh, whether he makes as big of an impact as he did last season, I don't know yet. Gotcha. What's your name? Uh, my name is Everett. Um, I, okay, my heart is beating really fast. Um, uh, just a fairly simple question. What is your favorite show out of like the Arrowverse shows? Ooh, he just put y'all on blast. <laughs> what is your favorite show out of all of the Arrowverse shows? Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> You were, you were hoping they would say something else and just start a whole bunch of controversy on Twitter. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in the picture. I gotta be like, I wasn't here. I don't. <laughs> I mean, what's yours? Legends of Tomorrow. Yes. yes. Thanks for the question. Good answer. I didn't want to have to come down there. <laughs> How's it going? What's your name? Um, my name is Kenya, and I have a question for Brandon. Um, how was the like transfer from acting as Superman to as Rey in uh, Legends of Tomorrow? Like, do you feel like it's an upgrade or direct downgrade? Do you wish that you could have uh, like gone into something more like, bigger? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's an honest question. It is. I appreciate. I appreciate directness. <laughs> Here's the thing about life. Um, there are good, good times and bad times. Ups and downs. Perception about life is, uh, we all have our own perception about each experience that we go through. If I would have looked down on Ray Palmer and my opportunity on Arrow, it would have been bad and crap and there would be no Ray Palmer in Legends of Tomorrow. Um, and that would, be, that would be sad for various reasons. Um, so my journey as an actor was to play this amazingly iconic role and uh, have an amazing time. And then that future didn't happen exactly as I thought it would, as everyone around me thought it did. And that afforded me a great opportunity to understand certain aspects about life, my own ego and humility, 
um, and a journey that I needed to go on um, to have that uh, downtime. I, I, I grew up with a pretty, I, what people would say, an idyllic childhood, um, and that afforded me great things, but it didn't teach me about the other side of life that many people experience, um, and have some harsh times and some challenges. So I was given some challenges, uh, many challenges, and I didn't always succeed. Uh, at first, I had to learn a lot along the way, and I started to uh, rework, um, get to work, um, learn some things I needed to learn about myself and working hard, and I worked way, my way back. I did some fun projects along the way, but Arrow and Ray Palmer's a real testament to me, um, you know, um, get, get to work, and uh, so I'm very, very proud of, of Ray Palmer and, and uh, of just the fact that I had that opportunity and that it made the most out of it. And I love bringing Ray Palmer to everyone. It's been a joy and, and such a surprise to me to be able to, to play this character. Um, I, I'm very grateful for it. So it's been an amazing experience. Thank you for your coming. Brandon Ralph for president. I can do it. What's your name? I'm Emily. How's it going? What's your question? Um, I was wondering, so if you could bring any superhero on the show that like not that we haven't seen already, who would you want to bring? You could bring a superhero we haven't seen already. Who would you put? Oh, on that man would be fun. It's really uh, interesting. We've seen him before. <laughs> Superman on Legends. I mean, he's always there. <laughs> I would bring the penguin, but it's got to be Danny DeVito. Yes. Nuclear. Oh wait, he's a don't do villain. Don't Nuclear. do that. He's a villain. He's a, he's a villain anyway. You don't want a villain on the ship. <laughs> How you doing? What's your name? Hi, I'm Jenny. How's it going? I have a question for Katie. Sorry, Brandon. Um, you mentioned John Constantine and everything. I was wondering if their relationship as like a friendship with Sarah and John will like grow. Will we see more of that? And can you give us any hints on that? I think Constantine is kind of like the devil on her shoulder a bit. Uh, Sarah's worked really hard to kind of get in a more positive space. She finally has, you know, something in her life where you know, like, I have something to live for, and I've got my stuff together, and I've got a girlfriend, and like, I'm a real person. And then in comes John Constantine, who's like, I'm this dark soul, and no one can love me. And the whole time he's like, you're just like me. People around us, they get hurt. And it's like, I think it's a bit of a battle for Sarah, because she's, you know, trying to be positive. And then there's somebody representing who she used to be, and he's like trying to pull her back into it. So I think there's a bit of tension there with that, and I'm really curious to see where the writers go with 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 it. Yes. Thank, Thank you for your question. Unfortunately, I got time for one more question. I'm very sorry to the long line. We're running out of time. I got one more question I can get out. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Alexis, and this is for both of you. Um, I was wondering what, um, sorry, I'm really nervous. Um, <laughs> like, what parts of yourself emotionally, like, do you guys use to, like, connect and embrace in your characters? What parts emotionally do we take, okay. use to um, connect and embrace with your characters? Why are you looking at me? Uh, <laughs> you had the answer before me. Uh, well, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I think Ray's last half full uh, view on life is one that I share. Um, so I, I'm always kind of pushing that and bringing that out of Ray and, and, and trying to balance all of the, the, uh, the some of the, you know, the character, just the, he's the light, he's the light of the show and that's what I, the part of life that I like and try to bring out of myself because it's more enjoyable um, for me. And so he represents that aspect of me and joy and, and possibility. Um, I guess, I, I think the biggest thing I relate to is the physicality, um, and, and just like the fighting, the, the power of, of your body, the control over your body, that's the biggest way I kind of connect with the character, and 
when I get to do fight scenes and stuff like that, it, it, it feels amazing and kind of the most fun thing to really tune into with Sarah. Thank you for your question. You. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have left for Brandon Rapp and Katie Lodge. Please give them a loud round of applause.